Whenever I teach analyzing financial statements of a company, people often tell me, Hey Sharik, we kind of understand why we are learning this, but we fail to relate to them. Then I tell them, okay, good that you understand why you are learning, right? Analyzing financial statements is super important to do fundamental analysis so that you can select great companies to invest for the long term. Now, one thing you are missing is the fact that these financial statements can be used for your personal finance management as well. It's not just that these big companies have to use financial statements, but you can use financial statements in your personal life as well. So the second financial statement that we are going to learn today is balance sheet. And the balance sheet that we are going to learn, again, let me re-establish this, is not meant to be used by big companies, but can be used by you also for managing your life, your personal finance. So make sure you do that as well so that you can start relating to them. So hey all, welcome to the 16th episode of the complete learning series of stock market investing and trading. As always, I put all these videos into a series. The series is available in the playlist given in the i button up above. Make sure you watch all the videos in the right order and learn really well. Let's all invest together and grow together. So it's all going good. We are all learning fundamental, fundamental analysis. Over the last many videos, we learned how to analyze the annual report of a company, how to analyze the profit and loss statement of a company. So the agenda of this video is super simple. The next financial statement, a very important one, the balance sheet of a company. And that's exactly what we are going to learn in this video. But before getting into the video, I, I have noticed one very important thing, right? So if you look into the stock market A to Z series that we are do, doing here, when we reach fundamental analysis and when we started doing complex stuff like profit and loss statement of a company, annual report of a company, you can see that views are drastically dropping. But I think it's fine. Uh, multiple reasons. Right? Number one, when I did the same in Malayalam years before, I saw the same thing. Views normally drop here because a lot of people do not want to get into the core elements of fundamental analysis. Maybe fine. But number two, I want to say is that if you're scared of this, please don't be. Let me reassure you the fact that if anybody can learn fundamental analysis and all of us can become great, amazing long-term investors. So anyways, with that being said, Let's get into this video. Let's take DMART as an example again and let's understand how to make sense and how to analyze the balance sheet of a company. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. The name is Sharish Shamsuddin. Welcome to Market Series. Okay, if you have marked the attendance, then let's get started. But for a change, I'm not going to quickly jump into the presentation. I'm going to take some time and I'm going to very simply explain the concept of balance sheet to you. Now, the problem with the term balance sheet is it is not very relatable. For example, when we learned or when we heard about profit and loss statement, everyone could easily understand that, okay, it is a piece of paper and at the end, we can understand if the company is making profit or loss and how much profit or loss is the company making, right? The term profit or profit and loss statement is very understandable, literally. But when, when it comes to the term balance sheet, we do not understand it, right? What does it literally mean? Balance sheet, a bit difficult, right? So that is where, as always, I'm going to take a very quick example, a very simple ex example, so that we can all understand what the term balance sheet or what the thing balance sheet is. Okay, now the example is, okay, I'm asking a person, I'm asking a person, tell me your current financial position. You can also do the assignment with me. When I'm asking the question, you can also form answers in your mind so that the example, the assignment becomes even more interesting. Okay, the question is, how much is your, or what is your current financial position? Now, how will the person answer me? The first thing he will look into is, what all he has with him, right? He will probably first write, I have, right? And he'll start filling in, I haves, okay? The first thing he'll be looking into is, is his wallet. He'll look into how much money he is having, right? So he'll see that he has 5,000 rupees with him. So he'll put that 5,000 rupees under I have. Then he'll look into his bank account and he sees that in his bank account, he has nearly 5 lakh rupees. He'll put that also under I have. Then he'll look into his 
investments. Yes, he has done a lot of mutual fund and stock investments over the time and he has nearly 3 lakh rupees invested for the long term. So he'll put that 3 lakh also under I have. Then he knows that he has a car and the cost of the car is nearly 4 lakh rupees. So he'll put that also under I have. So the sum of this, he would tell us what he has. That is the sum of his I have. So he'll tell, okay, this is my uh, financial position. I have so much money with me. But then I'll ask him, is it done? Is this your actual current final financial position? Then he'll think and say, no. Okay, so for a person, it's not all about what I have. It's also about what I have to give. What all obligation I have. So when I tell that to the person, that the person starts singing, okay, for buying the car, I have taken a loan. So I have to pay back the loan of nearly 3 lakh rupees. So under what I have to give or under my obligations, he'll write 3 lakh rupees of car loan repayment. Then he remembers that he had taken 1 lakh rupees of loan from a friend one year before. Now he, he has to return that money also. So that friend loan repayment he'll put 1 lakh rupees and he also knows that by the end of the year he'll have to pay tax worth nearly 25,000 rupees so tax liability of 25,000 rupees also he'll put under what I have to give or under obligation now you can kind of say that the financial position is clear now by looking into this you can see that this person has so much haves and so much obligations now to make things even more simpler what can we call these haves Assets of the person, right? Assets of the person, this look like assets, right? And what can these be called? Liabilities of the person. So when I ask this person to show his current financial position, what did he write down? He wrote down his assets and he also wrote down his liabilities. Now we can simply say that this is a very simplified form of a balance sheet of a person. Cool? So what is balance sheet? You tell me in very simple words. Balance sheet is a financial statement. It's a piece of paper which simply easily tells the current financial position of an entity. Current financial position of an entity. That is set. Now I have make, uh, made this very simple, dumbed this down to a very simple extent. But when it comes to a company, it is not this simple, this less complicated. So for that, let's get into the presentation. Let's see the actual balance sheet of DMART and let's learn more. Cool? I hope the example made things super simple for you. Then let's get started with the presentation. So what we are going to do is a balance sheet analysis. The very first thing we should or what we have learned already as what is a balance sheet? Balance sheet is a summary or statement of the financial position of a business and that the financial position of a business that lists the assets, liabilities and the owner's equity at a particular point in time. Cool? When we go ahead, you can easily understand what these are. So let's move ahead. So balance sheet also shows the net worth of a business. Very important. And the third point is very important here. Balance sheet shows how company evolves over the years. Now, this is a very important concept to grab. The fact that a balance sheet is not made for a specific year. It flows over time. That is, things mentioned in balance sheet of one year is carry forwarded to the next year. And it just goes over and over and over. In the case of a profit and loss statement, if you remember, it is made for a specific quarter or it is made for a specific year. A lot of things are not carry forwarded into the next profit and loss statement. But in the case of balance sheet, it flows over time, right? You buy an asset in one year, even after five years in your balance sheet, the same asset can be shown, right? So balance sheet flows over time is a super important uh, concept to understand. The next thing to understand is what does a balance sheet contain? It's very simple. So just like we learned the structure of a profit and loss statement and then we could pictureize a profit and loss statement very simply, right? Just like that, we are going to understand the structure of a balance sheet so that we can all easily pictureize it. So this is the structure of a balance sheet. At the top, every single balance sheet will show the assets of the entity. Now, what are assets? We already learned in the last video, right? Assets are anything that has a value and it is owned by the company. So at the top, there will be assets. Just next to assets or below assets, we can see liabilities of a company. What are liabilities? Very simple, right? Liabilities are list of debts that a company owes to others. Or these can simply called obligations of a company, right? 
amount of money or anything that a company has to pay out. Company is obliged to pay to some other company, some other entity, some other person. So those come under liabilities. Under liabilities, here we can see shareholders equity. Now this is one term that we did not learn when we took the very simple example of a person before right so there we did not talk about shareholders equity at all but in the case of a company this is a very super important concept so let's understand what shareholders equity is now shareholders equity comes under obligation which is it is a liability it is not an asset shareholders equity is a liability it's, it comes under liabilities tab only so what is shareholders equity it is the amount invested by shareholders okay now, I have made uh, things a bit more detail here. So, if you see, there are three kind of things which can come under shareholders equity. Number one is the initial funding done by promoters. Say, for example, a company was started and the company is started by its founders or promoters only. And when they started the company, they invested 10 lakh rupees into it. In that case, when you look into balance sheet, you can see 10 lakh rupees under the tab shareholders equity because that was the initial funding done by promoters. Another thing which can come under shareholders equity is any equity funding that the company has raised. For example, these people that we talked about, they started a company by investing 10 lakh rupees. Now, after two years, maybe they felt like, okay, we want to expand our business. So in exchange of equity, they onboarded some other investors and they took maybe some other 10 lakh rupees or 20 lakh rupees. Just an example then that 20 lakh rupees because that is money which came in exchange of equity that will also fall under shareholders equity also a concept that we learned in the last video also comes under shareholders equity which is reserves or surplus from every year you remember right when we learned profit and loss statement when profit was made in a company all of the profits is not paid back to shareholders as dividend a lot of the profit is kept in the company itself as reserve or surplus so that it can be used in the coming years for company's purpose. That money will also come under shareholders equity. So what is shareholders equity? Amount invested by shareholders or amount the company is obligated to pay back to its shareholders. So initial funding, any further equity funding or the reserve or surplus would fall there. So now let's go into the balance sheet of DMART to verify, to ensure that this is the exact structure uh, that is followed in the balance sheet also. So it is in page number 159, you can see consolidated balance sheet of DMART or Avenue Supermarts Limited. So just like we discussed on the top, we have assets, right? So we have assets and the total assets is shown here total assets so this whole portion you see here from here assets till here is the assets part so you read so much and you can see that the company has total assets of 15,472 crores so yeah assets is done just like we learned assets is shown there the second thing that we can see on the balance sheet is coming down what can you see equity and liabilities that is these two liabilities and shareholders equity they are shown together Liabilities and shareholders equity, they are not shown as different, different things, but they are shown as a single entity, as uh, equity and liabilities. Now, among that, the first thing that they are showing is equity. And that equity is the same as shareholders equity that we learned here. Okay, so equity they are showing. So you need not get into this. Maybe in the coming pages, we can get into that. But here we can see that the total equity is 13,677 crores. Then we can see liabilities. Exactly what we learned here, right? Liabilities we can see. Liabilities start from here till uh, here. So total liabilities is 576 crores plus 1,218 crores. Anyways, total equity and liabilities comes up to 15,472 crores, which is total from here so much they have added and that is coming up to 15,472 crores. Now, after learning so much, if you are a good observer, you would have observed something very interesting here. What is it? If you look into total assets here, what is total assets? 15,472 crores. And what is the total equity and liabilities? That is also 15,472 crores. What can you see? Total assets is equal to total equity and liabilities. I come back and that's exactly what I've written here. And this is what makes a balance sheet special. This is the balance sheet formula if you make also. Assets should be equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity. Assets, total assets should be equal to total equity and liabilities. See, both should be equal. 
Now, what is the significance of this? Why is assets is equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity? Let me tell you this. Say a company is doing well, is going well. One day, the company decides to shut down. They want to stop operations. They want to shut down the company. Then what should they do? They should be liquidating all their assets, right? They should be liquidating all their assets. And with that liquidated assets, which is cash, what should they be able to do? They should be able to complete all their obligations. They should be able to pay back all their loans. They should be left with zero obligations. Also, they should pay back all their equity holders, right? The initial founder, promoter, whatever amount they put in, that minimum amount has to be given back. Whoever invested further as equity investments, even they have to be paid back. Also, if there were any reserves or surplus, all those should also be given back to the shareholders' equity, right? Now, only if assets is equal to liabilities plus shareholders' equity is maintained, this could be done in the case of company is going bad. Otherwise, if this is not maintained, if the company wants to stop operations, then by liquidating their assets, they wouldn't be able to take care of their liabilities or obligations. I hope you get it. That's why, that's exactly why this formula is maintained all the times during the operations of a company. Now that you understand the basic structure of a balance sheet, the larger agenda of the video is done. So let's quickly move ahead and learn more about assets and liabilities. So moving ahead, let's understand about the asset side of the balance sheet. So under asset side, we can see two things, non-current assets and current assets. So there are two different types of assets. We'll definitely learn about them. So let's come into the balance sheet and verify that they are found in the balance sheet also. See, under assets, first you can see non-current assets. See, non-current assets, like some multiple non-current assets are listed here. Then the total of non-current assets is taken here. See, all of these are non-current assets and the total of non-current assets is 12,029 crores. Then comes what? Current assets. Just like that in the balance sheet also we can see. Then starts current assets. All of the dis different current assets are shown here. And the sum of that is taken and shown as total current assets. Right? Total current ass assets comes up to nearly 3,442 crores. And below that we can see total assets. Now total assets is the sum of total non-current assets and total current assets. That is the sum of 12,029 crores and 3,442 crores. So the total assets come to nearly 15,472 crores. So what is important here? to understand what is a current asset and what is a non-current asset. For example, let's first understand what non-current assets are. So these are assets that a company owns or investments of a company which are meant for the long term, which is meant to be liquidated only after a year. Or even if they want to liquidate, they can li liquidate it only after a year. So as you can see here, non-current assets are meant for the longer term and they have very less liquidity. So investments, which can be liquidated only after one year. A very simple example, I'd say, if a company has money invested into a fixed deposit and the fixed deposit has a maturity period of five years, then it comes under non-current assets. Another example can be a company invested into a huge new factory. Now, the factory cannot be liquidated in six months. It has to be liquidated. It is an investment meant for the long term. So such an asset would come under non-current assets. You can uh, look into the examples here tangible assets which are meant for the long term, intangible assets which again are meant for the long term, maybe a software investment that a company did which is meant to benefit the company for a long period of time. Those would come under intangible assets, under non-current assets. Then capital work in progress which is the capital that the company have deployed and the effect would come only maybe after a year. So all those would come under non-current assets under capital work in progress. All long-term investments maybe the company has done. Maybe the company has invested into bonds. Right? Bonds is a very good long-term investment product or some debt mutual funds. Maybe, right? I have seen companies doing it. And maybe uh, loans also. Now you might think, how is a loan an asset? Now a loan comes under assets when the loan is given out by the company. Maybe the company that we are talking about, the company has given a loan to another company. And if the tenure of the loan is more than one year, then it will come under non-current assets under the asset side. I hope you have a basic understanding here. Let's come here into the balance sheet and actually see what is happening with DMART, right? So if you see here, see, property, plant and equipment, DMART has 7,770 crores there. Or property, plan and equipment worth 7,770 crores. Can you easily liquidate them? No. So they come under non-current assets. Then we talk, already talked about capital work in pro, uh, progress. Then there is investment properties. There is goodwill. 
goodwill is an intangible asset right uh, there are other intangible assets also there are financial assets investments after that they have a few other non current assets as well and all put together gives the total non current assets of the company easily understood right so one important concept here is when a company shows tangible assets on their balance sheet the depreciated value is shown and when they show intangible assets their amortized value is shown now again if you have watched the previous video i'll give the link here you know what uh, depreciation and amortization are if not please watch the video you'll easily understand what those are now let's come to current assets if you have understood non current assets then it's very simple right current assets are assets or investments which are meant to be short term which can be liquidated very easily if there is a problem this can be liquidated or this money is supposed to come in within one year itself right those are called current assets what are they cash and cash equivalents say for example a company has a uh, 10 lakh rupees in their bank account that is highly liquid short term available asset that cash in bank cash in hand cash equivalents they can be considered current assets right so obviously they are current assets inventories now for example a company like dmart dmart might have huge inventory all across the country across their supermarkets which are supposed to be sold in the coming month only all those inventories can be considered as a current asset under asset side then short term investments if any receivables now what are trade receivables say a company has supplied a lot of things on credit to someone and the person is supposed to pay the amount for that within few months itself those are called trade receivables and those can easily be shown under current assets under asset side let's go into uh, dmart's balance sheet and see what their current assets are obviously inventories being a supermarket chain they will have huge inventory so right? 2742 crore rupees of inventories uh, is what they have as of 31st march 2022 right balance sheet is made on a specific time period on what day it is built we can see what were uh, assets and liabilities on that day it flows on a different day we look the numbers can be hugely different uh, moving down we can see they have a lot of financial assets as well uh, which are part of their current asset side cash and cash equivalents is nearly 95 crores anyways the total comes up to 3442 crores and the total assets is a sum of non current assets and current assets and it is 15472 crores i hope you understand the asset side of the balance sheet if not you can definitely read more look into the notes maybe do for a different company than dmart you can easily understand more more let's move ahead into the next side which is the liability side now when i say liability side both liabilities and shareholders equity also comes here under the liability side i'm calling it okay the first thing we can see is shareholders equity as we discussed before this is something that we took time before and try to understand right the initial funding any further equity funding reserves and surplus everything comes under shareholders equity so let's come here let's come into the balance sheet of dmart and see see under equity and liabilities which i call the liability side the first thing is shareholders equity so the total comes up to nearly 13677 crores very simple now equity attributable to equity holders of the parent is 13677 crores 64 lakhs then there is something called non controlling interest now what are they we already learned in the pnl statement video right non controlling uh, interest are the other minor minor shareholders of the subsidiaries in which dmart is a majority shareholder remember so it is their part anyways let's not deep dive into it because the number is very very less and it's less in most of the cases anyways the total equity is 13677 crores so when you look into this what is the easiest thing you understand the total amount the promoters put in any kind of equity uh, funding the company raised and over the last many years of operations every year the company would have from the profits it made kept aside a good amount of money as surplus or reserve just like we saw in the pnl statement video even in the last year when let's look here only you know when dmart made nearly 1500 crore rupees of profit they did not pay out the profit to shareholders as dividend they kept it as surplus or uh, reserve so over the years they would have done this multiple times and that's how the amount increased and increased and increased and that's how the total equity increased to 13677 crores cool understood then let's move uh, move behind into the presentation and let's see what else there are on the liability side just like we saw on the asset side there are non current liabilities and there are current liabilities 
very simple if you understand non current assets and current assets you can easily understand this also right non current liabilities are liabilities which can be paid in the long term maybe after one year also this these can be paid off these are long term loans long term borrowings long term provisions and just like that current liabilities are liabilities which have to be paid in the coming few months or within one year itself here we have short term borrowings short term provisions and trade payables now trade payables is the opposite of trade receivables here maybe dima took in a lot of inventory from a company and said okay we'll pay you after three months basically bought a few uh, inventory in credit now maybe after 3 months they will have to pay this back these are called trade payables now anyways non current liabilities and current liabilities are shown as different entities under the liability side here on the balance sheet see the here equity and liability started then we first talk about shareholder equity then liability side starts first we have non current liability side first they have a few financial liabilities and then there are a few provisions made then there are deferred tax liabilities which is money which is kept aside for tax to be paid but in the long term only then we can see current liabilities here and all these are current liabilities which comes up to nearly 1218 crores so here under total equity and liabilities the answer is the sum of total equity which is 13677 crores plus uh, total non current liabilities which is 576 crores plus total current liabilities which is 1218 crores which is the total comes up to nearly 15472 crores 64 lakhs which is exactly the equal of total assets and there we come to total assets is equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity what we learned in the beginning we exactly so how it is reached in the balance sheet of dmart so yeah that is it majorly from this video the agenda was to understand the structure of a balance sheet so that you can uh, form an idea of it and maybe when you start uh, looking into balance sheet you wouldn't be scared and intimidated so again i'll just look into dmart's balance sheet and i'll do one analysis okay i'll just show one analysis right so when i look here i see that dmart has current assets worth 3442 crores and it has current liabilities worth uh, 1218 crores only is this a good thing or a bad thing you think and let me know a company having high amount of current assets and low amount of current liabilities is this good or bad this is good only right now if this company has any problem it can easily liquidate this assets because these are current assets easily liquidatable now they can liquidate these assets and pay for the uh, obligations or liabilities or whatever they have so in this case just by looking into those i can say that dmart has good liquidity dmart is in a good position see that is one analysis i could do after looking into balance sheet now you might ask me hey sharik okay we looked into pnl statement there are a lot of numbers there we looked into balance sheet also and there are a lot of analysis which could be done here also and in fact i showed an analysis how can you do all these analysis no worries in a few videos we'll start learning about financial ratios and when we learn about financial ratios i'll make it super simple for you wherein you can take numbers from here and you can start analyzing companies on your own cool let's pace towards race towards uh, that final destination of ours anyways that is it from my side for today and this video make sure you hit the like button if you have liked the video go into the comment section ask your doubts and make sure that i'll answer your doubts uh, if you haven't joined my exclusive community of market feed there is a link to join the community down below make you can join the community you can talk to your peers there i conduct live q and a and discussion sessions also there and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet what are you waiting for share the channel with as many as people as possible and you subscribe and ask them to sub subscribe as well so yeah that is it from my side let's all learn trade invest and grow together see you in the next class bye bye